Hello and welcome to Series 2 of the Esri UK Housing Tutorial Series, focusing on grounds maintenance. For those who watched the first series on getting started with your premium data, welcome back. And for anyone who wants to catch up on that series, you can do so by clicking the link in the description of this video. As I mentioned, this series is all about grounds maintenance. So over the next four videos, I'm going to go through step by step how you can use Blue Sky's national tree map to understand what trees you're responsible for. Then how you can configure a form for your field workers to update tree data. In the third video, we'll showcase how you can assign tasks for field workers so they know which trees to survey and when. And finally, we'll build the green spaces dashboard in the fourth video to show how you can understand and monitor the status of maintenance of your green spaces. So let's get started with this video. Today we'll be using ArcGIS Pro and the National Tree Map data. It should take about 10 to 15 minutes to load and symbolize your tree data and then prepare it to be shared with your organization. Blue Sky's National Tree Map is the most detailed data set of its kind ever produced. With coverage across the whole of England, Wales, Scotland and the Republic of Ireland, the National Tree Map provides a unique comprehensive database of tree locations. This data contains attributes of the tree's height, canopy and crown extents for every single tree that is 3 metres or above in height. It is created from high resolution national aerial photography, accurate terrain and surface data, and colour infrared imagery. For more information, please scan the QR code on the screen or click the link in the video description. The National Tree Map dataset is available in a ready to use format through Esri. So if you would like to learn more and subscribe to this dataset, then talk to your Esri UK account manager. So let's load this dataset into ArcGIS Pro. As you can see, the National Tree Map data is split into three different layers, tree points, crowns, and canopy extent. When we zoom in, we can see how all of the datasets are presented. Tree points shows the tree's location, and this layer includes information about the tree height. The canopy layer shows the detailed canopy spread in a polygon format. And the crown is idealized circular shaped crowns of the trees. And this layer is also in a polygon format. We now need to symbolize this data and also ensure that it's only shown for the area of land that we're responsible for maintaining. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the crowns layer and change the color to a shade of green. And we're going to do the same with the canopy polygons and the points, picking different shades of green to distinguish between them and also changing the transparency so that we're able to view these layers on top of each other, but also get a detailed view of the base map underneath. So I'm now going to group these data sets just so that it's easier for me to understand in the map. Now, for the sake of this demo, I have blue sky data for a big cut of an area, but I'm going to need to filter this down to my housing association's ownership. So I'm going to copy over the ownership data layer that we had created in series one. So now on the map, we can see which area of land that my housing association is responsible for maintaining. I'm going to go ahead now and use the clip tool so that we can filter the national tree map by the land that my housing association is responsible for. The input feature is the tree points, then the clip feature is the ownership extent, and I'm just gonna choose an appropriate name that I'd like to save this output feature as. Let's go ahead and run that tool, and we can see now that the national tree map has been filtered just to show trees within my area of responsibility. So clipping the tree points within our ownership was straightforward and this process simply removed any trees that lay outside of the land that we were responsible for. We now also need to clip the canopy and crowns layers, but these layers are polygons so we're going to approach it slightly differently by using the select by location tool. We're going to ensure the relationship is contains to select any canopies that contain a tree point within them. Therefore, the selecting features layer is our tree point dataset. 
we can then apply this tool to see which tree canopies have tree points within them in our ownership. To save this as a new layer, we're going to right click on canopy polygons, click the data tab and then press export features. And I'm going to save my canopy polygons layer with a new name. The reason that we have used this method is because some of the canopy extents or crown extents may fall outside of our ownership area when in fact the tree is within the ownership. Also, some crowns and canopies may lie within our ownership when the tree itself does not so we need to remove those areas of the data. We're now going to run the exact same tool again, this time using the crowns layer. Again, once we've selected our crowns with a tree point within them, we can then export this as a new layer. So we've just clipped the tree points, canopy and crowns layers to only show trees in our ownership. Now the national tree map contains data attributes such as height and area already, but we understand that you may want to expand on this data set and add your own tree information, such as tree health, species, risk and more. So to add fields, you can open up the attribute table of the tree points layer and on the top left hand corner of the table, click the add button. Here you can add a field name and alias and then change the data type to the correct option. In this case, I would like the health of the tree to be a text field. We'll then save our edits at the top of the page. Now we can add text to our tree points to populate this attribute and make the data set as detailed and as extensive as you'd like. Every time you update the attributes, just make sure at the end you are pressing save to save your edits. To share this data with your colleagues and to add it to new and existing maps, let's go ahead and publish it up to ArcGIS Online. In the top bar, select Share and then Share as a web map. Add the relevant attributes that you want to see in ArcGIS Online when you view this map. This is best practice for storing and managing your data. When ready, analyse your upload, rectify any messages if they arise, and then share your map. Opening ArcGIS Online, we can now see the data and the map that we've just uploaded. Now it's important to note that you can edit your data set and add new fields both within ArcGIS Pro and ArcGIS Online. We previously saw how to do this in Pro, so now let's take a look at how you can do it in ArcGIS Online. Open the feature in question, in this case it's the tree point data set, and then select data. Here we can view the attribute table and we can see the edits that we made in Pro when we populated some of the tree health information. To add a new field, click on the fields tab and then select the add button. Now populate your new field name, display name, type and default value if you would like one. When you're ready, press add new field. If your data has a limited number of possible values that it could be populated with, you can create a list to make it easy to select one of these predefined values. For example, for tree risk, I only want my data to reflect four different values, high, medium, low, or no risk. Now by creating a list, it's really easy to update the attributes to select from one of these options. This is a great way for ensuring continuity in your data and for preventing editors from typing incorrect values or typos. It also makes it really quick for field staff to update attributes when conducting mobile data collection in the field. We can populate or update the values from within the attribute table itself or we can go ahead and open the layer in Map Viewer. If we open the attributes table here, we can then see those edits that we made in the table before have shown up automatically. We can then edit the fields at any time to reflect the most up-to-date data. Now we can save the map and we're able to share this content with other staff and add it to other maps in ArcGIS Online.
So overall in this video, we've loaded in Blue Sky's national tree map, filtered it to our housing association's ownership, and have uploaded it to ArcGIS online so it's ready to share with other colleagues. Check out the next video, where we assign tasks to field staff so they're able to maintain trees and conduct tree preservation orders.